I um I watched the film and there were some moments where it just was all out hilarious. And so um, I was just curious when you're on the set and having those moments, how many takes did you guys have to do with the kids on the field to kind of get them all calmed down and together to actually <laughs> shoot those scenes? Yeah. Um, you know, anytime you're doing a, a, a funny comedy scene and you have a lot of players and a lot, especially kids where they can break, they're easier breaking than, than even the adults know to keep it, try to keep it together. Although I got to say a lot of the adults broke too. Um, it can be crazy difficult. You know, the, uh, the fact that it's humid in New Orleans and the heat and you're like, Hey, let's get through it. That helps out a little bit. So the <laughs> amount of sweat you have uh, makes you want to get through it. But uh, man, there were some tough scenes. There really were. And the kids were really good. They really were good. But uh, yeah, I think it was the adults who broke more. I think we were laughing even more. Thank you, Kevin James. I love you, by the way. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. Adam, you have the next question. How you doing? I'm Adam Cohen from datarocks.com. Kevin, we, we've actually gotten to speak before. And my question is, you know, th this is a true story, right? This is based on Sean's life. So, you know, being a dad and being involved in the kids' sports, how, how do you feel like this really translated to like Sean's life, to your life and to put it into film? Oh, I mean, it, it translated tremendously because, uh, I mean, just talking to Sean and uh, when I spoke with him about getting all the information about what happened and, uh, and, and how he, came, you know, the process of him coming out to, to, to coach his kid's team, he would get emotional, man. It was like it was a great time in his life. It was, the, the, you know, because it enabled him. It was a moment in time, you know, in his life where he was able to stop and have the time to go back and, and, and reconnect with his son and it became the greatest moment in season of his life. I mean, you know, to be able to spend time with him and he would get emotional when I would talk about it, you know, like he was really tearing up because of the, you know, recalling all the great times they had and, 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 and doing that and, and the relationship, how it's grown from there, he said, and, you know, it, it was that suspension that enabled him to, to, to be able to do this, to give him that time off. So it took something that wasn't great from there to, to, to turn it into something amazing. And uh, like I said, the greatest season of his career definitely translated for me because I was like the same thing. You get so wrapped up that we all do. And, you know, our jobs and, and spending time with our family can take second, you know, can be pushed to the back of the, uh, the stove there. So um, I took out time recently and I said, I'm doing this too. And I, 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 my kids love to act in this uh, sm small local community theater stuff. So I joined a play with them and we got to all act together. I, I wouldn't take any other work. And it was the hardest job I've ever done, even harder than that. It was, it was so stupid because I'm an Oliver and I'm playing Fagan and, and I didn't realize I'd have to sing. I should have just been like one guy who stepped on set a line and left off, but I, I committed to it. I auditioned. I got it to, you know, uh, the part and uh, I've been singing and doing it now with them for a little bit. And uh, I got a couple more performances and then, yeah, but if it's, but like I said, it's, it's amazing to be able to do this stuff with your kids and to be able to spend time with them. You know, that's the stuff you can't get back. So uh, he taught me that and uh, he, I recommend it to everybody. Andy, you have the next question. Hi, Kevin. It's a pleasure to speak with you. I'm Hi. a huge fan. Oh, thanks. So my question is, when it came to this part, obviously we know that Sean Payton is a real person. And was there a little bit of Kevin in, the, in Sean's character that you could tell I, us? Unfortunately, because I'm renting the space, there has to be, like, it's, it's, it's going to be, I'm going to bring a little bit of me to it. Um, but I tried to get him as much as I could, you know, right down to the voice His his dialect was, it was so hard to get even, you know, he would admit it. He goes, cause I go, I can't, I'm not getting you. Like, cause he's, he's, he, I, I tried Southern, but he's not just so, like, he's, he lived in Texas for, but he was born in California and he's been all over the place. He was in New York for a while, but he's got a weird kind of accent and it, and it would go in and out. And he said it would too. So I was a little nervous about doing that in front of him, but uh you know, just bringing myself to it as much as, you know, and, and having fun with it and being like how I would react in this situation. There's a little bit of that in there, but I tried to bring as much of, of him, you know, because it is a true story based on a true story uh, of, of 
uh, you know, of, of Sean Payton to be, you know, make it as much Sean Payton as I can. And if I didn't know what Sean Payton would do, I'd bring a little bit of me and how we would kind of combine it. And uh, it was fun. It was a fun process. Fantastic job. Congratulations. Thank you. Amanda, you have the next question. Hi, Kevin James. I'm Hi. Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms and a Saints fan, who that from New Houdet. Orleans. Houdet. So I was all about this movie. But <laughs> my question is, um, you played two parts in this. Was this always the plan? How did it come about that you have these two roles? What two parts am I playing? What do you mean in this? <laughs> the the Sean Payton and then the assistant. <laughs> oh, the assistant. Yes. <laughs> How am I the assistant? Oh, oh, when I when I'm in that part. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, you think the, the assistant in the, in the show? I'm confused. I'm sorry. I'm confused on the part. So no, no, no. I was only one part in this in this movie. Maybe it was my brother. That's what you're thinking. Oh, my brother. My brother. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Yes. I, well, okay. Are you twins? No, but I'm <laughs> completely insulted that you think I look like him that much oh, because of the size of his belly over mine. He's shorter than me. He's much uglier. I can't believe you thought that was me. I okay. was going to ask. That was part of my question. I was like, did you have to get into costume and get a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was a prosthetic. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to tell him this. Thank you so much. Oh. This brings now joy to my life. Yeah. No, that was my brother. That's my brother, Gary. He played uh, Coach Mitch. He was the assistant coach. And uh, yes. And, and I do like to... Uh, uh, abuse him in the way that like wow. whenever he's in a movie with me, I like to make him do so. Yeah, he has to wear like a push broom mustache. That was in this movie. Some movies I'll shave his head. I just like to have fun. <laughs> with him. But uh, yeah, well, yeah tell no, he, him he has gotten a new fan here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a funny, funny guy. And he really, he did an amazing job with this, but I'm not lying. I am a little hurt that I look that much like him. Okay. <laughs> We've got to make some changes. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Kevin, I'm Tessa with mamasgeeky.com. Hi. Um, how are you today? Good? <laughs> Good. Doing well. Thank you. Yeah. So I watched uh, the movie with my kids. They're nine and 10. My nine-year-old daughter is obsessed with the vomit scene. She's cracking up. She's in hysterics. <laughs> I'm sitting there feeling like I'm going to vomit yes. myself. And she yeah. loves it. She thought it was yeah. the funniest thing in the world. Can you talk about filming that scene? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not good. Like even from when very early on, if my kids threw up, I, I can't be near it. I have to leave the house and not only the house, the county. I've got to get away from it because if it, it's it's if it goes with one of them, one of them throws up I'll, I, and I smell it or see it or whatever, I'm gone. So it's I'm not good. My wife knows that she's much better and, and I'll, I'll do other dishes. I'll do every I'll wash everything else to make up for the fact that she's got to th clean up the throw up. I can't do it. So shooting that scene, even just watching it happen. Um, and we would have, obviously it was these, the, technically they would have these little things that shoot the, the, the vomit out. I couldn't, I couldn't even look at it, right? It was just disgusting. I don't even want to know what it was. It was like this weird pea soup and oatmeal and just weird stuff. But it was, it was one of the funniest scenes to me and, and, and shooting it, but also I couldn't, couldn't look it straight on. Watch it. I didn't watch any of it directly. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm always the type that like if I see someone like my kids, especially if they yes. vomit, like uh, it makes me sick. So yes, oh. I'm gone. Shell, you have the next question. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, sure. I'm Shell with Not Quite Suzy Homemaker. Um, growing up, whenever my teachers were hungover or sick, they would roll in the TV <laughs> and put on one of those inspirational sports movies, which just starts out being, but I feel like this one breaks the mold a lot with its humor and with them not winning, but kind of winning at the end. Right. Did you draw any inspiration for your participation in it from any of those older movies with your own twist on it? Well, you know, it's... It was true to life. I mean, but it, it, it is the Rocky movie, right? I mean, he makes it to the champion all the way and then and he ends up losing in the end. But what does he really lose? He loses the game, but they 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 win the, the relationship and they win so much more. So uh, we didn't draw from it. I mean, it was the way it went down. They, you know, that's the way uh, it happened with Sean uh, coaching the Warriors team that, they, you know, he took them all the way from the basement all the way to the championship game, but they didn't win the big one, you know, and uh, it, it was, 
it, it couldn't have worked out better for us that way because that that is the more interesting story. You know, you think he's going to win the whole thing because he's the coach, and, and he didn't. And then it gives you know the coach of that uh, other team and 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 that 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 team in Texas. Uh, it gives them props too, and they they won and and they were the winners, and they, they get to say they beat a Super Bowl winning coach. Um, but it was it was just perfect all around, you know, for for a, for a story, and uh, that's why you know, yeah, we didn't have to do anything with it. But I would draw the closest you know uh, movie to it uh, to me is Rocky. It really is. Angela, you have the next question. Hi, Kevin. I'm a huge fan and I love your work. Thank you for oh, having you. me. Um, I had a question. I know that you're part of the production team. What drew you to this project? Because, I mean, it's a beautiful story, but what did you personally uh, find um, why it was important to, to do this? Just how Sean Payton turned, you know, it, it, you know he's such an amazing coach. Super Bowl winning coach and how he turned, uh, uh, you know, a, a potentially bad situation into an amazing situation, even bigger and better. It took time and stopped his life and, 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 and kind of refocused on what's important and went back home and did it and just said, this is what I'm going to do. And I, that moved me, you know, and, to, to, you know, we, we all need to do that in life sometimes, right. To stop and, and really, you know, kind of, regroup and, and figure out what's important and uh, refocus and, and, and do that. And, uh, you know, it, the challenge is when life has got you down is, is finding that moment, that positive moment to pick yourself up again. You know, that's, that's the hard thing because it looks like it's, you know, it, it's life has gotten so much worse and, and maybe it has in some ways, but there's always an opportunity and look, I mean, we're not making a movie about the Super Bowl saints you know it's, it's got nothing to do with them we're because of this considered you know horrible thing that he turned into his you know a a, a a massive win a victory we're making a movie about that you know this relationship with the son so he just it just shows you that you know uh, again amidst you know all this you know horrible things in our lives the things that happen these downswings that we can always turn them up you know and, and win i love that thank you Sure. Carolina, you have the next question. Hi, Kevin. I'm Carolina from What's He Says. Uh, I'm a huge fan, so thank you oh, for thanks. being here. Um, my question is, so, you know, the the these kids, you know, they just kind of needed a little push, needed someone to believe in them. So what message do you want families and kids and even younger younger boys to kind of take from this from this film? Yeah, I mean, always uh, th these kids come together as a, as a team, you know, and uh, support each other, and, and um, they get their butts kicked at times too. There's, you know, it's about suffering through the loss and 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 being able to come together as a team and and win in in, in their own right, you know, and and overcome this, you know challenges in life, you know, that you see in the movie where he, he sings to the girl and this and that and, and whatever has got you down, you know, they all have your own little issues in our life, but it's like, uh, we got to get through them and we can, we can, we can overcome it all. And, uh, you know, even with what's going on in the world now, it just shows you that it's like, we overcame that by, by shooting this movie and making this movie during a crazy time. And, and, and these kids were great with it and everybody was just amazing with it. And, uh, you know, it's life in the imitating art and art imitating life. And it's just, it's, it's basically shows you the, the model of, you know, you got to persevere. That's all. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Panisha, you have the next question. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So, um, in watching the film, I did notice that it was more about the relationship between the father and the son. Um, what can you say some of the things that you took from your personal life to bring into the film um, to involve the character that you played as far as your relationship with like your children and things like that? Well, um, that, you know, the, the, the problem in the movie for Sean, you know, the, the story was that he was separated from his kids. And as much as, you know, they were in good standing, you know, he, he never was, it wasn't like they were fighting with his kids, but he didn't have the relationship he wanted. And it was forced because of his job. Uh, 
like so many of us, you know, are forced away from our family and it's hard. And it's, you know, it's very easy to say, Hey, just take off from your job and, uh, you know, spend time with your family. Well, that's, that's, you know, some, unfortunately for a lot of families, not an option for, for people to do that. They, they don't have the time they can't afford it to do it. And it's hard, right. but it's, it's a matter of, you know, this came from a, a, an unfortunate situation that he just said, I'm going to do that. And he, you know, when, when, when life had him down in that way, he turned it to a positive and he, he changed speeds. And that's what a great coach does. He like, he looks at the opportunity, not the, you know, not the problem. Uh, right. and, and, and that's what I, I've learned with, with my family as well. You know, it's in, in taking those moments to say, Hey, okay, you know, this isn't going the way I want it to go right now or whatever, but I'm going to try and do this if I can, uh, as much as I can, you know, if I can't afford to be off or I can't do this or this or that. And, um, but it, it, it's, it really helped me focus in on what, what's, I mean, I always know my kids and my family is the most important thing to me, you know, other than my faith and uh, knowing that, you know, it, but it, you, you still need to be reminded, you know, you go through life and you, right. you get, we get dull to this stuff. We get back in our jobs, our old ways of thinking and this and that, and this is more important. And uh, like I said, if you have the ability to do it sometimes and to take those moments and to be able to spend more time with your, your family, because that's the stuff you can't, you can't get back. And it goes quick, man. It goes real fast. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. With just about a minute left, we have time for one last question. Adam, you have that question. Great. Thanks. So Kevin, my, my question is strictly on raising four kids. <laughs> what is some advice to give the kids individual attention and you know some tips and tricks about being a great dad? Yeah, that's it for me. You know, it's uh, it's one thing to spend time with all your kids. Like we just went to Disney World yesterday for one of their birthdays and spent the day and it's amazing. But like for me, it's important to say I got to spend time with each one of them individually and do their own thing because they can they can get lost. You know, they can get lost in the family part of it and never really get that personal attention that uh, you, you want to give them. So it's like I'm I'm trying and I, you know, I don't do it as much as I should, but I want to make an effort to like, Hey, we have a, a date night with, you know, one of each one of my kids have like, we can, we can schedule time and kind of do our, our own thing and, and what they want to do, you know, because as a family, sometimes it's not the same thing. We watch a movie that not all, it's hard to get a movie that everybody wants to see and, and do this or play a game that everybody wants to play. And, so a lot of them will tend to go off and they're on their phone or whatever. You know, it's like, it's like, you want to kind of, all right, let's, let's go spend time with you and do something just daddy and you and, 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 and that's it. So that's the challenge for me. But uh, when I do it, it's always, always rewarding. It's always fun. Yeah. 